Uh, let me begin by saying that it's a great pleasure to be here with you again. Uh, I think I was here this time last year. And I must start by saying the same thing, in that uh, I always feel that I'm very much a charlatan when I come to this kind of forum, uh, because I'm a total and complete dinosaur. Uh, and as I mentioned last year, every time I tell my children that I'm going to be speaking at a cybersecurity uh, summit, they fall about laughing, because they think that's uh, uh, really quite impertinent on my part to think I can come and uh, say anything of value to this kind of forum. But fortunately, I've got some very knowledgeable colleagues who help me out. And uh, I hope uh, what I'm going to share with you is, is of some value. The Mike Rogers, who was chairman of the US House Intelligence C Committee, said there are two kinds of companies, those that have been hacked and those that have been hacked but don't know it yet. So that is the kind of world we're living in today. And it emphasizes the fact that you need to be extremely cyber aware to effectively manage the risks inherent in today's cyber age. In today's world, information technology plays an immense role in our daily lives. And as a country, ever advancing technological progress allows us to increase our economic output through optimization of time and opportunities. As all of you are well aware, technological advancement is constantly evolving. Each major technological development has usually made our lives easier and enhanced our quality of life. But technology in mobile, in social media, cloud computing, etc., also brings a host of new risks. Hence, staying ahead of multiple technologies and the threats associated with them has become increasingly important. Cyber criminals are able to exploit opportunities in abusing the technologies even before the innovators discover these vulnerabilities. Governments and all stakeholders should therefore make significant efforts to study emerging cyber threats closely by examining key risk indicators. A very high premium should be attached, therefore, to constant vigilance in today's rapidly changing technological landscape. Cybersecurity threats are growing in volume, in intensity, and sophistication. It has therefore become very necessary to work out how to reduce the gap between investments in cybersecurity and their effectiveness. In general, cybersecurity is considered as a holistic set of activities that are focused on protecting an organization's vital information. Effective cybersecurity preserves the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information, protecting it from attack from bad actors and preventing unauthorized access to those who need not know. So in today's business environment, cybersecurity is not just a technical issue. It is very much a business imperative. Traditionally, cybersecurity has focused on preventing intrusions, defending firewalls, monitoring ports, etc. However, the evolving threat landscape now calls for a more dynamic approach. The cyber attack faced by the bank Bangladesh Central Bank through the SWIFT messaging system shows that even central banks and international payment systems can be vulnerable to these threats. As all of you know, hackers stole US dollars 81 million from the Bangladesh Central Bank. And as all of you also know, if not for the misspelt name indicated in the SWIFT message and the vigilance of a Sri Lankan banker, the loss would have been much greater. A commercial bank in Vietnam was also attacked using the same method three months after the Bangladesh hacking. Episodes involving the stealing of personal information from the Federal Reserve Bank of the US, the Reserve Bank of Australia, and the Czech Central Bank are other examples of increasing threat in the very heart of the financial systems of countries. 
It has been observed that cyber attacks occur due to political, commercial, and personal motives. Therefore, governments, businesses, civil society groups, and individual users can all be victims of cyber attacks. The three-week-long cyber attack, which disabled the government and the private sector in Estonia in 2007, the huge distributed denial of service attack which occurred in Myanmar just before their elections, the JP Morgan data breach and leakage of unpublished films from Sony Pictures are a few other dark episodes. There have been many more, as you're aware. These attacks have brought into sharp focus the need to protect financial institutions from attacks conducted via cyberspace for disrupting, disabling, destroying, or maliciously controlling a computing environment or infrastructure, and or destroying the integrity of data, or stealing controlled information, all with the aim of fraudulently moving large amounts of money from the targeted institutions to the accounts of intended beneficiaries. The World Economic Forum's 2017 Global Risk Report has identified cyber attacks as among the top five global risks in terms of likelihood in 2017. Based on the cyber threat real-time map, Sri Lanka has been identified as the world's 34th most, ranked most attacked country. The Microsoft Security Intelligence Report has revealed in an increase in the number of security incidents reported in Sri Lanka under malicious software during the course of 2016. The most common were Trojans, worms, obfuscators, and injectors. Conducting fora uh, such as this one helps to ensure that Sri Lanka stays ahead of the cybersecurity path. It is vitally important that we do so. These sessions provide a good platform to share intelligence on current threats, attacks, vulnerabilities, and remedies. In fact, the evolving nature of cyber threats calls for a collaborative, networked defense. Financial institutions have been at the forefront as targets for cyber attacks. While effectiveness of financial intermediation has been enhanced through technological progress, the potential destructive impact of cyber attacks on the entire financial system has also escalated. Financial sector institutions and payment systems are the key targets of intruders and hackers, as they are the richest sources of confidential data and monetary assets. The task of ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information has become much more complex. The rapidly evolving fintech industry, digital KYC, blockchain, big data, cloud services, etc., have made the regulator's role much more challenging. It is therefore essential to emphasize that financial institutions should embed cyber risks in their overall enterprise-wide risk management framework, particularly in their operational risk mitigation mechanism. New thinking in the cybersecurity arena describes three fundamental strategies to cope with cyber risk. On security, prioritizing risks and enhancing controls to protect against known and emerging threats. On vigilance, detecting violations and anomalies through better monitoring of workplace behaviors. And on resilience, establishing the ability to quickly return to normal operations and repair damage to business. Kevin Mitnick, who allegedly hacked into the US Department of Defense network, once stated, companies spend millions of dollars on firewalls, encryption, and secure access devices. And this is money wasted because none of these measures address the weakest, weakest link in the security chain, i.e. the people who administer, use, operate, and account for the computer system that contains protected information. Firms need to adopt a holistic approach while ensuring that the right basics are in place. This would serve to mitigate human error and insider threats. Establishing a framework for data governance can also be identified as a key element of an advanced cybersecurity system of a financial institution. Clear guidance on how data should be collected, used, stored, can prevent unwarranted breaches. Promoting an enterprise-wide cybersecurity culture will lay a solid foundation to implement such data governance policies. Outsourcing is another door through which cyber risk can creep into an organization. Firms should therefore seek to mitigate the risk by carefully selecting and managing service providers, 
and by incorporating cybersecurity and data protection into third party contracts. Realizing the importance of national initiatives on cybersecurity preparedness of payments and settlement systems, the Asian Clearing Union member countries have already established their own computer incident response teams at the national level, such as Bhutan's BT CERT, India's CERT IN, Myanmar's MM CERT, and Sri Lanka's SL CERT. In addition, financial sectoral CERT initiatives are in existence in both Sri Lanka and India. As the apex financial regulator in the country, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka has ensured that the regulated entities have cyber security frameworks in place in accordance with international best practices. The regulatory framework has also sought to ensure that the required room exists for fostering innovations to bring down cost factors. This balancing act, my colleague, uh, the director of uh, the payments and settlements departments here in front of me, Mr. Kumar Tunga, I know this is something they grapple with every day as to how to get this balance right between re regulation and security uh, on the one hand and encouraging dynamism and innovation and change on the other. It's a very challenging task and I know this is something they take very seriously. The CBSL also contributes to the government's digitalization policy. Establishing the financial sector com com computer security response team, the financial sector certificate authority, and issuing regulations under the Payments and Settlements Act to govern mobile payments are key regulatory milestones. Further, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka initiated the Chief Information Officers Forum to have an effective dialogue on, on IT security related issues. The Financial Sector Certificate Authority, Lanka Sign, is another advance in the cybersecurity architecture. The CBSL has introduced a number of initiatives in this area. I'm not going to kind of catalog them in the interest of time, but um, you know, uh, that's, I'm sure, accessible, and Mr. Kumaratunga, for one, will be able to take, take you through all the various initiatives that the Central Bank has undertaken. The Central Bank envisions promoting its cash, less cash society initiative by creating a balance between regulation and innovation, as it is the institution that is responsible to the people and the government for the safety and security of public funds, as well as for the financial stability of the economy. But this vision can be achieved only through the cooperation of all players in the finance and banking ecosystem. All in all, cybersecurity is about risk management. It is about protecting your business, your shareholders' investments, while maintaining competitive advantage and protecting assets. I would like to take this opportunity to extend my gratitude to the organization of the summit for providing this platform for sharing information and experiences on challenges in the cybersecurity field, enabling stakeholders to devise a multidisciplinary approach to manage growing cyber risks. According to General Keith Alexander, the head of the US Cyber Command, the loss of intellectual property due to cyber attacks amount to the greatest transfer of wealth in human history. Stealing intellectual property will lead to disruption of national infrastructure and damage the image of individuals and the country. Hence, combating cyber crimes has to be considered as a national interest and a responsibility. Time is ripe to make cybersecurity part of our daily business practices. At the same time, it is necessary to reiterate that cybersecurity strategies should not hamper business development, innovation, and stakeholder customer convenience. There is a saying which goes as, he who defends everything, defends nothing. It should therefore be a carefully devised balancing act to ensure delicate management of the cyberspace. Just before I finish, let me um, share a quote from Sun Tzu, uh, on the, who wrote The Art of War. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. So let's identify our enemy very clearly and be prepared to combat cybercrime. Our wholehearted commitment towards collaborative defense will assist us to win the battle to maintain cybersecurity. 
the central bank as the regulator is committed to working closely with all of you in this challenging endeavor thank you all very much i wish this summit all success thank you